Well, hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. As always, as always, I really do generally hope you're well. Wherever you are in the world, however old you are, male, female, thank you so much for uh, supporting this uh, channel and my family and I and what we do. So today we are doing a really popular recipe uh, called butter chicken. And trust me, it butter tastes nice. Let's get that out of the way. It's almost as bad as some of the jokes I've been doing on Twitter recently. This cheese one in particular. All about the dad jokes, folks. What could be butter than butter chicken on its own than butter chicken served in a bread bowl? Now, I didn't know what a bread bowl was until a few years ago when I discovered it in this place called Panera Bread in America. Shout out to my American family, Cindy and Sammy, for introducing me to that. The best way I can describe it is imagine a bowl, okay, and where, where your food is normally served, but you can eat your bowl. That is effectively what we're doing. We are gonna make a gorgeous butter chicken with chicken thighs. Mwah. Love chicken thighs rather than chicken breast. Just a personal opinion. Serve it in a bowl. We're going to core it out so you can dunk the bits in it. Ugh. Mwah. I'm doing them in sort of slightly smaller bowls for portions, maybe for lunchtime or a snack with a side salad, something like that. But of course, if you wanted to, you could get a big old cob uh, and serve it in that. So without further ado, I think we are ready to go. Uh, the dogs are just chilling out down there, uh, all happy because it's a lovely day outside. Uh, we'll start with our rolls. We've got to take off the lids. So these are the rolls that I'm using, freshly baked this morning uh, from the local bakery, and they smell absolutely gorgeous. Uh, in fact, I just want to lavish this in butter right now and eat it, but we're not gonna. Serrated knife, that's the one with the uh, jagged uh, edge on it. And you want to try and take, imagine that this is in like fifths. You probably want to take the uh, four fifths, leave that in there, because that's what's going to hold uh, the butter chicken. See, so the lower you go, the less capacity you're going to have. Uh, leave that, okay? This method is really good for uh, making soups as well, serving soup in a bread bowl. Mwah. So the inside of the bread, other than the crust, uh, use your finger and thumb and just pinch it out like this. And also, don't discard it. So we're just sort of hollowing out the bread. I don't completely rip it apart and take it straight down to the crust because it could potentially soak through. Leave, leave a little layer on there, but that's it. Holy bread, Batman. So I'm just doing that to like three or four more. So I'm just going to stick them onto uh, a baking tray because we're going to warm them through uh, just on the inside just to firm it up a little bit. It does help it uh, hold things in a bit more. If you want to be extra flash, you could rub some garlic into it, a bit like when we did the garlic bread before, if you want that garlic vibe. I don't, because I don't want to smell today. Anyhow, let's put this in the oven. Only about 10 minutes in now, right? And we can still crack on with other steps. So that's in the oven for about 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to cook our chicken thighs. Oh! in a wok. But first we're going to get our sauce ready that's going to go alongside with that. All right, so into this mixing bowl. That is two tablespoons of corn flour, some single cream. Uh, it's 250 mils of that. I've gone for the lighter cream just because, well, it's going to make us feel a little bit better about it, isn't it? And the uh, Greek yogurt which is going down absolute storm, the uh, Greek yogurt, the two ingredient pizza we did. Uh, about 100 grams of that. And we're just gonna mix this together. The corn flour acts as the thickening agent, so that will help around the chicken in just a bit. But with this roughly blended through, we don't need to go too crazy. We'll leave it like that and work on our chicken. Wok and roll. It's time, uh, here's our wok. The chicken thigh pieces I've got are a little big, so I'm gonna use food scissors, which I find the easiest way to slice things, like seriously, above any knife. Just gonna cut it roughly up and obviously wash your hands after holding the meat. Vegetarians, you can replace this with any sort of butch vegetable you want. It'll still work quite nicely. Maybe some courgettes and peppers. And if you're off bread, then it's probably just about to use a normal bowl, aren't you? For those of you that watched the vlogs, my friend Kevin that was helping me with the DIY last week, on Monday he said, hey, I'm doing this diet where I'm not having any bread because it's a really good way to lose weight. And I know that. One day he was here, we had pizza. The second day, he said that he had a massive craving for Marmite. So I went out and bought him a massive Marmite loaf, which he ate the whole thing. And the third day, he had pizza again. That's what happens if you come and do work at my house, guys. Now this figure takes time. All right, chicken thighs cut up, wash your hands. That took a little longer than expected, that other step. Probably because I was telling you about my uh, story with Kenvin, but uh, here we go. Uh, they're nice and done. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Using some spray oil today. Cheeky little season if you want. 
I just like pepper. So I'm gonna stir that round, get it nice and coated. I'm gonna cook it on a hob for around about five minutes until it's golden. To one side, be sure to have your tandoori paste ready to get that on your chicken. We're gonna stain it like fake tan, it's gonna be amazing. We've got our yogurt -y corn flour mixture. And this is just some coriander, AKA cilantro, I think, that I've just roughly chopped. Absolutely love chicken thighs. There's something about them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with chicken breasts, but I don't know, I was converted a few years ago when I first started using them. They're a little bit cheaper, but they're just, they're meatier. Feels like good meat, you know? Nearly there now, folks. If it gets a little bit wet, I just went and did this. Just drain off some of that fluid, okay? Because you want it to be against the metal to make it fry better. On the subject of chicken thighs, though, remember I went and did that video uh, where I went and learned how chicken nuggets were made? The guy actually told me that once they did um, start adding chicken thigh meat in with chicken nuggets a few years ago, but loads of people started complaining that the nuggets were a different color because thigh meat is a little bit darker. So they switched back to chicken breast. I really want to make chicken thigh muck nuggets now. Actually, in my first cookbook, there's a recipe for cornflake chicken nuggets. So try that with thighs. Mm. We're now going to add in our tandoori paste. We're going to add two tablespoons into our bowl. Uh, if you're a bit funny with stuff like that, or you want it milder, just put maybe like half a tablespoon. All right, here we go. Only needs about a minute coating this before we add in the other stuff. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, that smells so good. Soothed it straight away, brought the temperature right down. It's just gonna cook onto our chicken. I hope the camera's making it look as good as it does in person right here, but oh my goodness. If you just heard that, that was the sound of me dropping a very large knife on my toe. Luckily I've still got all my toes. So there it is. Oh, look at the marble effect as we do this. Oh, lush. The corn flour, yogurt, and cream mixture. A few lumps in there, as I say, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna like stir those all through as it warms up. I'm just getting it initially stirred through it right now. And what we'll also do is chuck in the coriander that we chopped. That'll wilt and go in there and you know, add a bit of color, as you can see. Loving the contrast. Oh yeah. Leave a little bit for garnish at the end. If I had to caption this scene, it would be Amy pretending to be not bothered by the smell right now, but I can tell she's craving for it. All right, here we go. This smells amazing. It's just on a low simmer, just about to hit that. So it's wilted the coriander fully. The corn flour has thickened that sauce. Uh, we don't want it too thick, but if you wanted to, you could go crazy and add some more corn flour, but that is a very beautiful thing indeed. All right, I've just set up uh, some more coriander in the bread, but an amazing t-shirt has just arrived. Sorry, I've just got to show you this. Yes, that is a pug. Uh, riding a T-Rex with a unicorn, uh, which I think was in My Little Pony, an episode that my big sister watched years ago. A friend of mine told me to get that, and I thought, yep, all right. Homer, we're gonna put the nice lens on for this, mate, all right, because people like that. Onto the same board that I've used earlier for the bread and chopping the coriander. We've got our bread bowl with a, just a very slightly crispy inside now. There's our pan. I'm just gonna very carefully pour it into the bowl. Oh, or maybe not. <laughs> Just gonna dump it in. Look at that. Well, there goes my presentation. Well, hopefully you guys don't watch me for presentation. Um, you can go to other channels for that. Hopefully I can just inspire you to give this a go. That's what it's all about. In fact, I love it when your stuff looks better than mine. And let's be fair, it normally does. So there we go. We can put a couple of scoops of bread there. I actually like to dunk them in and scoop them out. A few more bits of coriander. A little blob of mango chutney, why not? Right in there. And of course, if you want, you still got your lid. So you can stick that on top with it. <laughs> I really think this is good. I'm gonna taste this now. Oh, I'm actually gonna sit some on the crust, the lid. Oh, you want some guys? Don't say I didn't ask. Look at that, it fits perfectly into that lid. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. That chicken is so soft. And the actual mango chutney at the end just cuts through a little bit of sweetness with that kick of the uh, tandoori paste in there. But of course, like I say, make that as strong or as weak as you like, or use other curry paste if you prefer. But that is it, my friends. As always, if you do try a recipe, do send me a picture, ching, uh, at my virgin kitchen on all social media. I might even retweet it or regram it or all that other stuff. If you've seen any cool recipes that you'd like me or my family to try, please let me know down below. And of course, please make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Go on, do it, and press the bell button to uh, make sure that you're notified whenever I put a new video up. Other than that, I think you're gonna absolutely love this. So give it a go and let me know what you think.